just before we have prayer, just give some directions. Please, at your seat, sit at a place it is indicated to sit here. We only want two people per, two people per bench. We are following the COVID protocols. Please make sure you are sitting at a place that is indicated. Sit here. Some can use even these uh, front seats. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, let us have our opening prayer. And we will move on. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this day. We glorify your holy name because of who you are in our lives. We thank you that, Lord, you've been able to guide us up to this day. As we congregate here today for this requiem mass, God, we ask you to be with us. We pray for the family of Dr. Lea, that, Lord, you will continue to comfort them and to lift them. I know even as we gather here today, you have a word for us your children. May you speak to us and let all the glory and honor be unto you. So Lord, begin with us and end with us for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand, let us turn to our hymn number one that is in our programs on page number nine. We having the choir leading us. You can take the other mic. Praise the Lord. We will sing song number one, and it goes, Just as I am without one plea. Three. Start. Just as I am without one plea, but God, thy blood was shed for me, and God, thou be to thee, O Lord of God, I come, I come, just as I am man way. seated in the presence of God. 
once again just to take this opportunity to say pole to the family to the colleagues of our dear sister Dr. Lea uh, even as we go through this service today we pray that the, glow, the grace of God shall be sufficient to all of us I am Pastor Fanwell at the Messi who will be leading the program today. I have uh, my colleague pastors here. Just want them to say their names and we will be moving on. As the pastors come to introduce themselves, we will have the one who will be doing the eulogy uh, coming over to take us through the eulogy. Praise the Lord. God is good. And all the time, I'm Pastor Godson Golio from Transformers Chapel, Nairobi. Thank you. God is good and all the time and that is his nature we judge him faithful my name is Pastor Tobias Warambo from Transformers Chapel Nairobi thank you God bless you uh, we're going to the eulogy now the one who is this uh, microphone, microphone down morning everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming and for all the support. My name is Dr. Clive Katiba. Leah is my younger sister. And this is her life history. Dr. Leah Mukana was born on the 3rd of March 1969 at Muhila Hospital run by the Church of God. To her parents, the late Honorable Brown Aleka Tsuma and Mama Reverend Rosemary Oyaya Tsuma. She was born into a Bashunya clan of the Matioli village in the then Matioli sub location, Lukura location, Lurambi division, Kakamega County. Dr. Mukana was the ninth child of her parents who had 13 children, namely Margaret Amimo. Grey Tsuma, the late Donna Mignole, Green, Buta, Faith Akibaga, Rose Herania, Clive, the late Chris Tsuma, Brian. She went on to sit for her KCSE in 1986 
of taking a fast position. This is a period of place at the Elemental Science class where she studied biology, chemistry, and mathematics. While in many regards, besides her love for science and as exhibited in her frequent participation in inter-school science conference, Lea was also a major member of the school basketball team that many of her schoolmates remember. She joined Kenyatta University in 1989 and graduated in 1993 with a Bachelor of Science degree in general biochemistry and molecular biology. She later pursued a postgraduate studies as follows: postgraduate diploma in education at Masai University, 1998 to 1999; Master of Science degree in biochemistry and molecular biology. Jomo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology from 2001-2003. PhD in, bio, in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology Technical University of Brunswick, Germany, 2005-2009. Her career, 1993-1999, graduate high school teacher from 1993 to 1999, Chico Igaz, St. Peter's Juniors, among others. 2000-2003, research technical assistant, International Center for Insect Physiology and Ecology, CIP. 2003-2009, research assistant associate, University of Nairobi Department of Biochemistry. A lecturer at Lord University Research Fellow of Harvard Medical School, that's between 2009-2013. 2013 to 2021, she became the founder and chief executive officer of the West Scientific Recycle and Reuse Company, Astrocom. Lea was also a family mother. Lea was blessed with three children, namely Eric, Louis, Marcy, Lassia, and Norman Elton. So now, she was a doting and very loving mother who tried to impute her passion for education. Her passion there was passionate about scientific research. She spent most of her working life at the CPA University of Nairobi and Law University, either directly involved in laboratory and field trials or training both undergraduate and postgraduate students on biochemical research, biosafety, purpose of writing for research funding in ETC. Lea's passion for research and her the following a dissertation research internship program, master's degree research scholarship, IFS grant for research on natural products for lead identification, that scholarship for PhD molecular biology, African Development Bank grant towards the cost of service for implementation of Kibera waste to energy project. In fact, they have formal employment to concentrate on this. The culmination of this was the design of the Kibera Waste Energy Project under Havana Astrocom. This project aimed at preserving the environment by converting solid waste or municipal waste into energy in other byproducts. It earned the company a grant of close to one million US dollars from the African Development Bank. Further, a lot of interest and enthusiasm was expressed by potential partners in the scientific world. The project led to several national and international conference recognition, unfortunately, by Dr. Mkana. Some activities were done on a local level. Unfortunately, the entire project, as she had dreamed it, had not fully taken off at the time of her demise. The family expects to see her legacy live on and the project implemented. And that's how our resilient, determined layer will want it and will have loved it done. Lea was also a member of professional organizations following the American Society of Microbiology, International so Society of Extreme Extremophiles, Bio uh, Biochemical Society of Kenya. She published several scientific articles in both local and international journals. She spoke three international languages, English, French, and Germany. Lea's final journey, Lea fell critically ill in April 2001 and diagnosed with cancer 
in its late stages. She was admitted at Eldoret Hospital and started uh, radiotherapy. She, however, developed complications and the treatment had to be discontinued to allow her recover. She was transferred to Nairobi and underwent emergency procedures at MP Shah Hospital and Coptic Hospital in a bid to save her life. Leia fought briefly for five months, but she lost the battle and rested on the 28th August 2001. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking us through that. We go to the next item, and that is uh, tributes. And this place will be led by William. And I am hoping that uh, once you are called, you speak what you've been told, uh, what you have, and don't call another person. So William will guide us in this. So please, William, welcome. Oh, Pole, Pole, William. There is a hymn number two to be led by the Gunyore Guards alumni. Pole, that has escaped my eye. Please lead us, and then William will be coming after they sing. Praise the Lord again. We are singing hymn number two as Bunyore Girls High School. This is the school that raised Leah up to university and PhD level. It is called Bula Nandi. Let's go, we start with the refrain. So let's go. Oh, Bula Land, sweet Bula Land, on thy highest mount I stand. I look away across the sea where mansions are prepared for me and view the shining glory. My help, my hope forevermore. I've reached the land of corn and white, ah, all its riches freely mine. Here shines and dim one blissful day for all my night. Oh, sweet Eula land, as on the high mount I stand, I look away across the sea where mansions are prepared for me. And view the shining glory show my help, my hope forevermore. My Savior comes and walks with me on sweet communion. Have we? He gently leads me by his, for this is heaven. prepared for me and view the shining glory show I am my hope forevermore I sit perfume upon the is born forever one old tree and flowers but never fading grow where the streams of love forever oh sweet you land was on my heart mount i stand i look up way across the sea where a bunch of love prepared for me and view the shining glory 
Pastors, Berifty family, I greet you all. Tributes, and uh, we shall start with uh, Mama Rosemary. So I will call her to come over. Please help her over. Nasa, Sandy, kwa wale wote ambao wametusaidia kwa vitu vingi. Mimi sitasema mengi. Kama vile mlisikia kuzaliwa kwa mtoto wangu mpendo. Tulimpenda leo sana. Na kwa ufupi Sina ngufu ya kuwagea bengi Na mungu Kama baba yake
akipatia kirud in that way and so
I most used to visit. When the teachers were in class, the former Leah used to hide a storybook under the, the desk and on her lap, she was reading the storybooks. The teachers are teaching. So we decided to copy her trend, especially Maureen and I. Let me tell you, at the end of the term, we failed the terms, Leah passed. Leah got 97% in some of those subjects, and I get 40, Maureen gets 50. We sat down and asked Leah, Leah tell us. How come you passed and were reading storybooks to you? She just, you know, she never used to laugh loud. She was a very quiet girl, very, very cheeky. And she just said, come, shall we end? We told her from today we are done. We will never read storybooks with you. So I joined Josephine. These were book ones. There are types of grades that you need to read so that you can pass. Leia was a very, very, very intelligent girl that only internalizes when the teacher is teaching. When it came to revision, these are the types that just turn pages a few minutes and then they throw away the book. And that is why she lived this far. So I met Leia, Leia later when we were at the university, she was studying, she was doing her master, master's degree, I was also doing my master's degree at the University. And she told me she had done biochemistry. She told me I must at the end of the day, we called Dr. Tatsuma. I told her, you deserve it. And then later, when she was launching her research, she came to me, not as Felix, as, as, as her former classmate, but as a servant of God. And she appealed to me and asked me, you know, well, sister, I need to speak with you. We met at Adam McKay, and she sat down with me, and she presented the plan that she had for the research that she wanted to launch. So I told her it was the best thing. We prayed about it, we kept praying with her on phone most of the time. She was a believer. Leah was born again. This girl you see lying here, she was deep in God. I know and I have tested. She did no nonsense with anything to do with God. So I'm glad that she lived the children at the feet of Jesus. When she was sick, actually she honored me to pray and lead prayers in church at Radisson Blue Hotel. And when she fell sick, I called her and I told her, Leah, where you are, it is only God who can rescue, rescue you from there. And I told her, don't think about the children or anybody else. I want you to connect your soul to God. And that is the only one who knows the depth of the desire. He is Alpha and Omega. And he is the only one who can do whichever pleases him. So we walked the journey every day, we used to pray until she couldn't talk anymore. So I ended up just chatting with one of our sisters, Margaret, every day as we, as the alumni, we know it as, kept on moving with her at medical level and even at the federal level, we are still on. So Mama, yes I have always said, 
Yale atira ho mhono kukwe and chige kabisa and around the house. And even the children, may the Lord God Almighty hold your hands and walk with you. Peace be still. God bless you. to 
scientist that she was, there were no stupid questions for Leah. Uh, some of the two anecdotes I remember, I remember for example asking her, Senje, what is the pH of Umsherah? I, I remember asking her also, what is the alcohol percentage of Chang'a? And I remember afterwards maybe this conversation going on for two or three days and having hundreds of people joining us in all this discussion. The final thing that I would say about Claire is the resilience, the courageous girl that she was, even through her illness. I remember when she was down in Eldoret and uh, my Senje uh, Aseka called me and said, Senje, vola one in the Senje uwo. And Leah was very strong and that mind was still sharp. She could still recognize me and she was still cracking jokes. So uh, she's left us with this lesson of resilience of showing us that everything is doable, everything is possible, as long as you go for it. So to finish, uh, if you allow, I would like to read a poem uh, that I have brought, uh, being a teacher of literature, uh, my Senje being the intellectual that she was, I brought this W.H. Auden poem called Funeral Blues, which I'll be closing with. Funeral Blues. Stop all the clocks, cut off the telephone, prevent the dog from barking with a juicy bone, silence the pianos with muffled drum, bring out the coffin, let the mourners come. Let aeroplanes circle morning overhead, scribbling on the sky the message, he is dead. Put crepe bows round the white necks of the public doves, let the traffic policemen wear black cotton gloves. He was my north my south, my east and west, my working week and my Sunday rest, my noon, my midnight, my talk, my song. I thought that love would last forever. I was wrong. The stars are not wanted now. Put out everyone. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. Pour away the ocean and sweep up the wood. For now, for nothing now can never come to any good. Thank you. Thank you. We are almost coming to the end of that session. Uh, yeah, I was to call you. There has been some consultation, and one of Leia's cousins, uh, Bishop uh, Tsuma, uh, I request that you come and make your tribute for the reasons that you have given. Bwana sifiwe uh, waombolezaji wote uh, siku ya leo ni siku ngumu kwetu uh, I must say that uh, I've been affected by the death of my cousin Lea is a woman of impeccable character. We have grown as a family and we have grown as one people. If there's anything I have I have because of my late Uncle Brown Suma. If there is anything in life I have, I have because of my cousin Gray Suma. I went to the Bible school in the Pentecostal Bible College and every time I'll get myself 
in Grace House. And he was very instrumental to me. And I pray that uh, our sisters and brothers within the Tsumas family should be able to, to be a people that shares. So, the church, thank you. Thank you. Mama, thank you. Thank you. And all of you who have come, we say thank you. I was struck by stroke in 1914, uh, 20, 2014. The, it has been very difficult for me. In fact, uh, last year I was to go, um, but uh, the Lord is still sustaining me. Then I came, I was hospitalized in the Robo Hospital, and um, again, it is just God's mercies. So every life we live, let's live by faith in Christ. Let's be a people that are connected to Christ. May the Lord bless you. I call upon Chris from Astcom. Chris. Uh, praise the Lord, Church. Uh, mourners of my hero, Dr. Lea Suma, I greet you all. It's very, very sad, very sad to be here at this time talking about and celebrating the demise and the last journey of my CEO, great. Lea Suma. Lea was a lady who was determined to go for anything of value in her life. She was a teacher. A teacher in a way that she taught me how to live and face life from all dimensions. She could not relent to do anything that will help a poor person in a society. In Astcom, Leah chose me as a representative of the community in Kibera. And surely, she was a leader who will lead in front. Every time, the situation, the season, could not matter to her. It be raining, shining, or maybe in mud, in dust, Leah was on track. Surely, this what I'm saying is not something that I'm just imagining. But are things we used to do with her in the community. Most of the time, we used to walk on foot. As you can imagine how big Kibera is. I was even sometime asking her if she was tired, but she could tell me, Chris, let us forge ahead. Because success does not come easily. My dear brethren, I will say and repeat that if there is any person in the family, any person in the society or in the government, is that person who could not let the dream of Dr. Lea Suma just die like that. Astcom was surely founded to make sure that a person living a life that was so low to be uplifted and live amongst other people who are of value. For surely, 
When I met Dr. Leah back in 2010, when ASCOM was just an idea, we used to have an office at Nyai Stadium. She showed her efforts as an industrious lady who could go for anything. As you heard Dr. Katiba telling you, that was the very time she was moving up and down. I remember us going to Dandora to just take a survey and a research of how that waste was. But I will assure you that even up to now, I haven't seen any person anywhere who could teach me how Dr. Leah was teaching me. And I still miss her so much. And surely, it is with deep sorrow, if it were that God comes here and we ask him questions, I would have asked him if only he could have someone to put in place so that the dream of our fallen hero could be moved ahead. And surely, we have had so many meetings with people both international and local, who have come to make sure that the project ASTCOM goes ahead. But as you saw the pandemic, when it struck, things were taken on a slower motion. But we have not given up hope. The community still awaits. The community still prays. The community of Kibera, as you see, it is called Kibera West, to hear any voice of concern of who will stand in the gap to make sure that ASTCOM does not fail at any point. How I pray that God rests her soul in peace. As for the church, thank you so much for molding such a person to be in a society and in a community. Because as Pastor Phyllis told you, she can confirm that we were with her in meetings of prayers when Dr. Leah needed help from above. And she surely was determined to ask God to ask heavens to come to her assistance when she needed. I surely have lost someone who will have added value in my life. And I don't know what I will do from here, but I know God knows. As for the family of the departed hero Leah, Please, this family of Dr. Leah, I can see, is still young. Eric, Nolan, and Rara, as I can see them, they need your help. And if there is anything you can do, is to stand with them. Because as the body rests in the gasket as it is, the soul is with us. And we stand questionable for anything wrong that will go in the lives of the left family. I have much to say, but I'm short of words because of what has happened. Thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Akris Pinas I'm just winding up. Uh, before I call the second last person, Chris, who is just leaving the stage, I want to encourage you and ask you to walk like Peter. After walking with Jesus, he took the mandal. So take the mandal and whatever Leah had started, let it not die. By the grace of God, it won't die. We will have Weku with us.
That is the second last person, then I will, I will be done. Uh, umati ulio kuja hapa kushuhudia kupeleka mwili wa rafiki yetu dada yetu hamjam yeah my name is alfred weku i'm here uh, on three titles one I was educated by the late Brown Suma. Um, number two, I'm a psychologist. I work at a money counseling center. And number three, I represent this clan Amatioli who are the diaspora. Because Amatioli, we had deficiency of land and some of us moved away. And the unity of Matioli still exists. Let me go back to the family. As psychologists, we say at the moment this family requires a lot of social support. Social support involves everything financially, prayers, good advice and the development of those children there. Let me talk about parenting. My research was on parenting styles. Nataka kushukuru mama sana ulilea watoto vizuri. Tumpigia makofi tafadhali. A family has two parents, mother and father. When father is busy working, generating for the development of the children, the mother is at home as a homemaker, the way my sister-in-law was, encouraging the children to study. You did a great job, and may God continue blessing you. I want to talk about the unity of Matiolis. My daughter one day brought me a boyfriend and when I did a lot of uh, inquiry, because I live in Mombasa, I realized that boy was a Matioli boy. And I want to tell you here, the ones who are in Nairobi, as you go home, you bring the Matiolis together, the diasporas and the originals. We are just one, we are one. As we are escorting the body of Dr. Lea, I want to encourage the family to be strong. Strong in the sense that at home, people may not understand there is corona. Some of you will be labeled proud because you don't want to greet or they were extending hands. I am saying refuse. Let's have bodyguards or people in form of bodyguards to guard these people because the God we serve is more superior than respecting a human being. Science and spirituality, they go together. We have been told there is corona. Let us respect the science, whether we are in church, that is why this microphone is being sprayed. That is why me, as a, as, as a psychologist, I'm working with my spray. Because we must respect science. I just want to conclude by saying, the parent who, has, who is remaining, the grandmother to those children, those children, let us look for a way and let us continue embracing those children because they are still, some of them are still at developmental level. Finally, the process of uh, grief, there are five stages. We call it dabda. There is denial at the beginning. I don't know what stage they are in. There is anger. There is bargaining. 
Nyasaye ishtere shino vukule mama wefu. There is depression, then there is acceptance. I am asking the crowd here and the crowd at home, let us support this family so that they can go through the five stages as quick as possible so that they can continue with their lives. And we want to just remind all of us, there are three days very important in the life of a human being. Daktari will concur with me. The first day is the day you are born. Bwana sifu ya sana. The second day, ni siku ya kujua ulizaliwa kwa sababu gani. And these children have noticed, the second day they have realized there is death coming. Bwana sifu ya sana. The third day is the day you are taken by God. Yule mulamua alisema, yeah, alifanya kulea tu, na mungu mwenye wa mchukua. Family, let us accept the death of Daktari. And in fact, I would wish, if it is grief, grief to your maximum. Don't be told when you are crying at Usilie. Psychologists will say, allow people to grieve as much as possible so that they don't end up in stoicism. Stoicism ni mtu wewe mama amekufa ama baba amekufa ama sister amekufa watu wanalia na wewe umevumilia tu umevumilia tu unasema uko ngangari baadaye it will hit you later when you realize oh yes she was the most instrumental person in my life so let us avoid that and therefore poleni sana wenye umefiliwa na Mungu awabariki thank you The last person I was told the Bunyora Lumina chair person will just great. Just great. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Naitwa Vikio wake webuye. Chair Bunyora Girls Alumni. Nimeambiwa nisalimie, nitakiuka kidogo. Kuna leaders hapa wa Bunyora Girls Alumni tafadhali njoni kidogo na nyipia mseme Salam leaders please Salam to tafadhali because I would request that uh, we observe time we only have uh, less than an hour Pole tumeruka hiyo tusamee jina yangu ni Pamela Mkabana mimi ndio treasurer wao asante Habari zenu Mama pole sana watoto pole sana tutajaribu kutembea na nyinyi mimi ni chair wa uh, aso, uh, the welfare association jina langu ni Priscilla Mosigisi Asante sana kanisa na family watoto mama tunasimama hapa kama bonyore gas tunasema poleni sana watu wote ambao mmekuja kusimama na sisi kama bonyore girls tunasema asanteni sana leo was in form 1 when i was in form 4 na hata mimi pia ni member wa Astcom wale ambao mmekuwa na lea mnajua tumekuwa Radson Blue na tumetembea tena wakati mrefu sana na daktari na she was a woman of virtue she has lied to rest because god wanted it to be so na sisi tunashukuru Mungu asanteni kila mmoja ambaye amekuja kusimama na hii family ya mheshimiwa Tsuma kwa wakati huu mgumu na Bwana azidi kuwalinda kanisa ya Transformer where lea was worshiping hata sisi pia tunasema asante mmemlea kiroho na mudishe salamu zetu kwa pastor Dioe kwamba na sisi pia tuliwajua na muendelee kuombea hii familia bwana wabariki sana I want uh, I want to finish by saying this I thank mzee waku weku I've just talked to my niece at the mog I asked her to accept this occurrence so that healing can start and i told her if you feel like crying cry so i thank god that is confirming through mzeweku i know my sis my cousin uh, rose will do vote of thanks but kindly allow me on behalf of all the thomas family 
who have been working with the bereaved family, I was bestowed the responsibility of the, being the chairperson of the arrangements. I want to thank you for all the efforts that you have put in, for the support that you have put in, and we want to pray that God shall see us through up to Saturday. Up to that juncture, I want to thank you and return the program to the church. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. That is always uh, the most difficult uh, a stage to deal with, but we thank God that we've tried our level best. Uh, there will be a slight change on the program that the prayers for the family will come after the sermon. Uh, just want to recognize uh, any representative from Church of God with us. Can we just have one person to come and say hi? One person on behalf of Church of God. And then after that, we will be singing hymn number three as we welcome the sermon of the day. My name is Reverend Daniel Aswani, Senior Pastor at the Right Church of God, where Clive and family were members of the church before they left the U.S. I want to thank them for continued connection with us at the church, and uh, we bring the condolences from the family. Because we know that this the family is a founder member of Church of God in East Africa, Kenya. And uh, even Mama, I knew her long time ago in 1974. We were admitted at the Miela Hospital. I was sick that time and she was also sick. And she has continued being close to the church. I just want to say, Pole. To the family and we know that where Leah has gone we all are going there so we pray for strength for the family especially the children and mama who is aged and thank God for her longevity even to see this is even a blessing otherwise thank you all for coming and thank you for recognizing Church of God as a stakeholder in this funeral. May the Lord bless you so much. Amen. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> Reverend was my teacher at St. Paul's. I'm glad to I see to him see. here. I forgot to say that uh, with me, I came with the, my associate pastor, Reverend Isaac Amogaka. If you may just wave. I also came with my wife, Reverend Martha Aswani. Just wave. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Shall we be upstanding to uh, sing together hymn number three? And the Bunyorega Salumnai uh, Choir will lead us as we sing hymn number three. It is in Greek. Okay, uh, okay, so we're going to <laughs> sing in the Luya language, which is of Wimba Muluya. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We may be seated in the presence of God and at this time. I want to take this opportunity to welcome our pastor to come and share with us the word of God. And I believe the Lord has something in store for each one of us, a word that is going to uh, heal our hearts, encourage us, and make us to uh, just focus on him 
because him alone is able to do what man cannot do. Welcome, man of God. And I will ask the one here, whose life is in your hands, Abba, Father, that you plan the number of the days everyone will be alive on the planet Earth in the name of Jesus. Behold, it's time to hear from you, Abba, Father. Please open the hearts of everyone, especially the family, the closest members of the family, and everyone that has been hit hard by this matter, O oh Lord. May you open their hearts. May your word penetrate. May you comfort. May you strengthen. May you exhort. And at the end of the day, may your name be glorified. We thank you and we bless your name as your servant comes. To you be glory forever. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Somebody say amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's say again, God is good. And all the time. Yeah, even uh, during such times, God is still good. Amen. Amen. As you have heard, my name is Pastor Godson Golio from Transformers Chapel, Nairobi. Uh, together with Pastor Tobias, we bring greetings and uh, condolences of our senior pastor, Pastor David Adioe, whom we are representing today a very close friend to Dr. Suma. We also send our own condolences from myself and my wife and, and family. Praise the Lord. I've seen, I've seen Cesarina just wave where you are. They have worked very closely with Dr. Lea and uh, I thank God, we thank God for everything. Thank you so much, uh, all of you, for coming to condole with the family. Uh, those who heard the words of the psychologist very well, it's allowed to, to tear, isn't it? Sindio, inakubaliwa kulia. Sindio, ama kutoa machozi, ama kulia. It is allowed. Even pastors, at times, we are overwhelmed. Hallelujah. Uh, I was... very close to Dr. Lea. Very close. And I receive grace from God to minister today. My sermon is live ready. My sermon for today is Live Ready. What have I said? Live Ready. I'm not saying Live Ready because you are dying tomorrow. I'm not saying Live Ready as if you don't know what is happening. I'm not saying live ready because you don't know your future, no. The sermon is prompted by many things, but because of time, I'll just share a few. I don't know whether you have been concerned. It has really concerned me of late. If you read the funeral announcements, if you go through the papers, whenever you go through the news, it is so alarming the way people are passing on. Has it surprised you of late? 
You are with somebody today, tomorrow you see them in the newspaper. Very young people, sometimes old people, sometimes children. It is just alarming. Very alarming. And when I was told that I'm the one to minister in the today's service, what came to me immediately is that we have to live ready. Praise the Lord. I've not come to instill fear in you. Instead, in fact, I've come to give you courage that you are supposed to live ready. When you live ready, you are not worried. When you live ready, you become strong. When you live ready, you are not scared of what is happening around. When you live ready, you know where you are going. You are not ignorant. How do you live ready? I will share very, three very basic things quickly and then we will conclude. Number one, how do you live ready? You live ready by surrendering your life to the one who knows you better. The one who knows you very well. Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 11 and verse 12. There is one who knows you very well. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 and 12. There is somebody who knows you very well. When you surrender your life to this person that knows you very well, then you are living a prepared life. Then you are living ready because this is somebody who knows you very well. What does the Bible say? For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give you an expected end. And then you shall call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. This person that I'm talking about that knows you very well, this person that I'm talking about that you have to surrender your life to, this person that Dr. Leah had known very well, that's why I'm grateful even for the home church. Thank you, senior pastor and the associate pastor for the great work and Mama Leah for the great work that they have done back at home. I can confirm as one of her pastors that this is a lady that trusted God. That Dr. Leah feared God. That Dr. Leah had surrendered her life unto God. How many doctors have you seen even in the city when they are in the when they are in the when they go to the law courts or they are being sworn in? in a certain office they lift up one hand when you see somebody lifting up a hand instead of a bible what does it tell you there is something there isn't it so there are many doctors they don't know god they don't fear god they are worshiping their books they are worshiping what they have read but I want to confirm as one of her pastors that she feared God. She surrendered her life unto God every time. Before she did anything, she could call her pastor, please come and pray. Before she started this project, please pastor, come and pray. This lady I'm talking about, this, uh, uh, they, they have worked together with for, for, for a while. She can confirm. When Dr. Leah wanted people to work for her in this company, almost 80% were born again. Am I, right? Am I correct? Yeah, like 80% were born again. She feared God. She surrendered her life unto God. So we have come to watch, to we have come to celebrate the life of somebody who feared God. 
Somebody who surrendered her life unto God. That is why I want to encourage ourselves as we prepare ourselves. As we, in order to live right, we should do what? Surrender our lives unto the one who knows as well. God knows all your days. God knows you. We were discussing with mama in the house. And we said, Mama, what did we say? That there is only one thing God has hidden from us. You are wondering why, why I'm addressing Mama in, in English. She's, she speaks very powerful English. Very powerful, very strong. I tell you, I was impressed. So we were talking with Mama and we said, only one thing God has hidden from us. God has hidden, we don't know the day any of us will do what will pass on. It is hidden. We don't know. My prayer is that all of you may live long. Say amen. But I want to say also to me as a pastor. It is not strange when I hear that this and this and this has happened because I know that things, have, uh, uh, things happen. But the question is, are we living right? Are we living ready every time? Are we living right every time? Have we given God the first position in our lives? Have we told God that God take over? Because I know you are the one who knows my life. You are the one who knows my, my beginning. You are the one. What did he tell Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1 from around verse 5 there? That I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Praise the Lord. That is why I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not feeling I'm not discouraged at all. Eric, Nola, Mercy, don't be, don't be discouraged. Don't feel as if the world has come to an end. There is somebody who knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Praise the Lord. And because he knows you, he says, I know. Not only did he know you, but he also knows the plans that he has for you. He knows the plans he has for all of you. He knows the plans that he has for the, for the mom. Mom was saying it was better. God could have just taken me and uh, le let my daughter continue living. No. But one thing I like about her, she said, but we are not questioning God. Praise the Lord. When you reach a place and you don't understand what is going on, don't question God. Just understand that he knows what he's doing. I know the plan that I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. To give you what? A future and a hope. To give you an expected end. To give you a future. God has your future in his hands. God. Your future is not in the hands of any man. Your future is not in the hands of any government. Your future is in the hands of God. In fact, can I surprise you? Do you know that when you don't have, uh, 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 when you don't have parents at times or one parent, do you know that God takes that place of that parent? And if God takes over, then what, 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 what will happen to you? God will ensure everything moves the way he wants to move. Praise the Lord. Therefore, I want to encourage us today that we should do what? We should live right or live ready by giving God the first priority. Number two, quickly, because of time, I don't want to take most of the time. You might be wondering why I'm addressing us. I'm addressing us because such a service we know we are celebrating her life, but it is also our service. God wants to remind us a few things here and there. Number two, so that you live ready. Love people and be forgiving. 
What have I said? Love people and be forgiving. Penda watu na kuwa mtu wa kusamehe. If Dr. Leah was not somebody who loves people and if she was not forgiving, what could have killed that Tari could not be anything like cancer. It could have been high blood pressure or depression or anything. You are hearing about the project, a great project, a big project that attracted, uh, I don't know, a million dollars something. You don't know how many enemies it also attracted. Praise the Lord. This is a strong lady. This lady has fought. This lady could be walking at times and from nowhere. People just come, they arrest her. They lock her somewhere. This lady has passed through things. If she wasn't strong, she could not have lived until now. Up to, up to that moment she passed on. Praise the Lord. But every time you meet her, when she's explaining to you, when she's telling you, Pastor, pray for me, she talks like it was, it was, uh, pa Pastor, uh, Pastor, do you know what happened? When I left church, I was going home. When I was going home, four men appear. They arrest me. They tell me I'm under arrest. Others came. They, have, they want to take my land somewhere. Others want to take this. Others want to do this. Others want to do this. Mom, you understand now we are close, isn't it? You see how much I know. So, this is a very strong lady. But what did she do? She was forgiving. She was loving. Don't carry people in your heart. Don't carry people in your heart. I know they might offend you. Not they might, they will offend you. People will offend you. People will talk. People are born to talk. They can talk. They can talk. Mom, you have to be strong. The children, you have to be strong. Everybody amongst us, the alumni, you have to be strong. Maybe from here, I don't know whether you have a bus as, a, as, as Bunyora alumni, but maybe from here you buy a bus, or, the, or your chair lady buys a, a new, a new, a new uh, Prado. And then the story starts, you see? She's the one who sacrificed Dr. Lea. You think it's not possible? It is very possible. Very possible. Somebody comes up and says, Okay, mom, I heard Dr. Lea was planning to build for you a story building. Now that she's not there, let me build one for you. And I build one for, for, for Eric. I build one for Nola. I, 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 I give Mercy uh, another, another one somewhere. Then they'll start, speak, they'll start talking. You can even overhear. Maybe you're passing somewhere and you overhear. You see? How comes all these riches have just come after Leah has gone? Maybe the money that has been withheld for long, we've talked with this lady, the money that has been withheld for long, maybe something just happened, the money is now released. What will people say? You see, they killed her so that they enjoy the money. But what do you do? You listen to them, but you do what? You forgive. You do what? You forgive. Jesus is on the cross. There are some people that are, are so daring. Jesus is on the cross. He is crucified between two thieves. And one thief that behaves like most, most of us. One thief says, if you are truly the son of God, you save yourself and save us also. 
The fifth that was, I believe, on the left, I believe. That is why in our culture, most cultures, if I'm giving you a gift and I'm giving you with my left hand, even if I'm left-handed, it doesn't matter. But if I'm giving you a gift with a left hand, you will feel, no, it's not correct. Or if you are receiving a gift from me with a left hand, you'll feel it's not correct. This thief blatantly talks against Jesus right before his face. Save yourself and save us. But the thief on the right, what did he say? He, he rebuked this other guy. He told him, are you not even ashamed that we are suffering the same punishment with our master? We are rightfully here because we are thieves. We are rightfully here because we, 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 are, we are paying for our sins. And did, what did he tell Jesus? He told Jesus, remember me in what? When you go to paradise. Praise the Lord. One thing that I love about Jesus and that I want you to adopt as you forgive people, Jesus never replied or answered this thief on the left, Ali Yamaza. But this other thief, Ali Yamaza, Kusabu Aliskia, Naongea Vitu Zile has Zitamvunja Moyo, Akanyamaza. Don't argue with people. Don't return evil with evil. Don't question them. Where did you get the information? Leave them alone. But forgive them from your heart. The thief on the right, Jesus told him, Today, tell your neighbor today. He told him that today, You'll be with me where? In paradise. Learn to leave people that are pulling you down alone. And learn to walk with people that want to walk with you. That want to encourage you. With, encourage you. That want to pray for you. That want to motivate you. That want to make you to add value to your life. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 16. Let me read a scripture on this and then I, con I finish with the last one. Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Matthew 6, chapter 4, verse 14 to 15. Forgive. Forgive so that you'll also be forgiven. Forgive so that you also be forgiven. Praise the Lord. Last but not least, because of time, if you want to live right, or you want to live a prepared life, or you want to live a life that is you are living ready. There are so many things that I have, but I don't want to take most of the time. I've just picked on three main ones. Comfort or encourage others. Comfort or encourage others. Everything that we do, whether it be good, whether it be bad, I want us to understand anything that we do, it is a seed we are planting. Everything, everything, everything that we do, whether it be good or it be bad, it is a seed that we are planting. I want us to plant a seed of comforting and encouraging each other. Uko kwetu idaho idaho onasema nunu nunu ni wange mukamba ni wao 
Wanasema hivyo. We need to encourage each other. Hapana sati oh eh eh, eh ba, 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 wa, ya, ya kone ka, ni kanga wa, wasuma kama kanga mheshimiwa kena kanga mheshimiwa mheshimiwa bai anza kanga mheshimiwa kama matioli kama matioli kena know that whatever you plant is what you will do what you will reap whatever you sow is what you will reap be an encourager be somebody who encourages others be somebody who comforts others I love this my pastor friend so much. We've worked t- together. We were ordained on the same day. Every time we hear something is happening to somebody, we love to sacrifice and rush in and encourage and comfort. Not just because of anything else, because we know it is a sin. We have to encourage each other. Let me read one verse that confirms that we have to encourage and comfort each other. Then I conclude from there. First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. These are very common verse. Listen carefully to these verse, verses. First Thessalonians chapter 4. I'll read verse 13. Then I skip. I go to 16, 17 and 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, the way our sister is sleeping, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. We should sorrow with with hope. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise fast Akina Daktari, they'll rise fast they are dead in Christ they'll rise fast then if we'll be there still in our, in our mortal bodies before, before that day then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Verse 18, listen carefully. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Comfort one another. Comfort one another. That is not, I don't know whether, whether this verse is in our Luya Bible. Reverend Guru Bible, you Luya, Guru Vasu Lulemu, comfort. In Geo, Uko Nyumbani, they don't comfort one another. If anything, they rejoice when somebody is suffering. When my dad passed on in 2019, at, at, at age 67, I'm the firstborn, and my dad at, at 67, I was saying he could just uh, reach at, at least 70 or something. When he passed on, our compound is fenced, a serious perimeter wall with serious gates with serious houses see no pastor with serious houses <laughs> when you come you don't ask you don't need somebody to tell you remove your shoes do you know what they did in 2019 when my dad passed on hey they are a bedroom paka kulinjira Cleanse me by the blood of Jesus. Wronged me. Those that have been carrying in my heart, I forgive all of them. Father God Almighty, 
I know because I've forgiven them you've also forgiven me give me a heart to comfort others give me a heart to stand with others in Jesus name I pray amen father I thank you for anyone that has made that decision to live for you father I pray that you strengthen them I pray that you give them the grace the energy I pray that Lord God you cover them by your precious blood in well and good if you don't have a church where you are attending why not you are already in a church you are highly welcome in the name of Jesus Christ let's now welcome the family let's now welcome the family so that we pray for them family members let's come over just in, uh, somewhere here yes just come over here one of the ways to comfort you is through prayer god shall give you strength god shall give you that grace and uh pastors that are amongst us please just come over so that we pray together pastors that are amongst us please, please lord let us pray together almighty and everlasting god we come before your holy presence this afternoon with hearts that are funny imagine how powerful that family becomes and we pray that the same will be true to these children who are left behind we pray for mama who is aged we want to thank you for her life we want to thank you for her strong character her strength in christ has helped her to bring up a family that loves you and for that we want to thank you we want to pray for the brothers and the sisters. The Lord God, you'll strengthen them. The Bible says that it's only you and you alone that can give us the comfort that we require. Father, in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ, we are claiming that comfort in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you said that you are going to heaven, but you will leave us with the comforter. That is the blessed Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, because the Holy Spirit is in the life and the heart of every believer. And that's why we are more than courageous that we know that you're going to strengthen these people. In the next few days, Lord, as they prepare to lay the body of Leah back to the ground, we know they are difficult days, but you will be with them. Blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on the cross. We thank you for the organizers of this service. We thank you, Lord, for those that have come to comfort the family. Because we have been told by the, the, the psychologist that Lord God, being together with these people is part of the healing. And we pray that he has come here has been called by God to do exactly that. And for that, we thank you. This is our humble prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we all say, Amen. Be blessed, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, our time is far much spent, and we need to be coming to a close. We, I would request that we have uh, two baskets. After the vote of thanks, we will be having hymn number five. Uh, we will be led by the Bunyore Girls alumni as we will be giving the offertory. Leah lifted this woman name high and placed us on the world map in places where we probably would never have been known. So we thank God for that. We also thank God for sustaining us throughout Leah's journey with this illness. It was a very tough journey. Um, it could only, we could only make it through the grace of God. 
So we return thanks to him uh, for working with us up to this point. I thank uh, the Friends Church for honoring us, honoring our request to have Leah's service here, even though we are not members of this church. Thank you very much. I thank um, Leah's church, Transformers, for accepting to come and give the sermon on uh, this day of Leah's last journey in Nairobi. Thank you very much. I thank Christ Compassion Ministry, um, my own pastor, Apostle Enos Radini, and Pastor Kathy Radini. When uh, Leah was first diagnosed with cancer, like everyone else, I panicked and I ran to my pastor and requested for them to pray for my sister. Uh, he did not just pray, he rallied the whole church to pray for Leah in the true spirit of compassion. The whole church prayed for Leah, uh, someone they did not know. They walked with us on the journey. Uh, Leah went through uh, distress after distress and like the fighter that she was, she fought back. We celebrated uh, when she managed to pull through one crisis and then she would go down again and would request for prayers again. And even when Leah rested, um, the church has rallied with us. They've comforted us through home visits. They have sent uh, prayers to us as a family. And I know that uh, they are represented here. I have seen a few, I haven't been able to see, and I don't know how many are here, but I know that they have come here to condole with us. And I just want to say thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Bunyore Girls alumni. I, on behalf of my family, cannot thank you enough. When Leah was diagnosed with this uh, illness from the first day, you worked with us, you became a part and parcel of our family. You walked this difficult journey. Once again, we went through the ups and downs. When Leah uh, fought back and made, made it through a crisis, you celebrated with us. And again, up to the last day, when Leah rested, you have been with us. You have honored Leah in the most beautiful way that there's no words that can express that. I actually remember telling my Sanjay Ayera that I didn't go to Bunyore Girls, but I almost wish I could be adopted into this uh, group because of the, just the kind of care uh, and support you've given us, uh, Leah's family throughout this crisis. Thank you very much. Dr. Andrew Odiambo, uh, the doctor was taking care of Leah in the last days of her life. When it became obvious that Leah was not going to make it, he called us as a family and broke the very difficult news to us and told us as a family that we needed to make uh, a decision about uh, Leah's care going forward. None of us in the family could make that decision. None of us was brave enough. But Dr. Odiambo uh, took the decision about, I mean, upon himself and did what was best for Leah. Um, I don't think it was a an easy decision for him, but at this point as I stand here, I am grateful that he did that because in the last days of Leah's life, she suffered so much. Um, Coptic Hospital. You made Leah's last days uh, comfortable. You treated her with dignity, even though you knew that her life was coming to an end. You provided the best uh, bedside care that you could for her. Thank you very much. Asticom, the colleagues um, of Leah that worked with her, especially on the Waste to Energy project. Uh, Chris 
made a very emotional speech here. And um, at, this, at this point, I just need uh, to encourage you. If I can be allowed to boast a little bit, Leah was just the most brilliant person I knew. She was my younger sister, but when she started talking, especially about her uh, scientific journey, I sometimes looked at her and wondered if she was the younger or uh, whether I even went to school because Leah was just that very brilliant person. And I can tell you, Chris, that even when Leah was in hospital, unable to sit and work on her laptop, she would call somebody and say, probably it was Christine, one of her nieces, and she would say, please, Christine, open my, my email and check if there's email from this and that and that person. And Christine would go there and she would say, uh, okay, here's this email from, from so-and-so, and Leah would uh, say, please read the email to me, and Christine would, would read it. And then she would dictate to Christine what to write to that person. All this communication was about Asticom and the project she loved so much, the Waste to Energy project. And I know that Chris has talked about uh, the obstacles that she faced that uh, made it impossible for, her to take, for the, this project to take off the ground before she left us. But I just want to encourage you, Chris, and all those people. She worked with a lot of women groups and youth groups, especially in Kibera, on the waste management, uh, waste collection and management uh, aspect. That God will provide somebody who will take this project to the level that Leah expected and maybe beyond. Because people like Leah do not just die. Uh, they die only after God has, as we go back home to lay Leah to rest, that he will go before us and that he will make a way for whatever and needs that are there at home. And at the end of the day, when all is said and done, we will know that he is our God. He has called Leah home, as we are also on the journey heading there. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, sister, for that. Uh, maybe you would, uh, we would get some direction of what happens. When is it? you traveling, and uh, if people would want to travel to the burial, how do they get there? Maybe you can give that information. The Bunyore Girls alumni, uh, hymn number five, you will lead us. Uh, thank you once again. Uh, we are traveling home tomorrow. We plan to be to leave Nairobi at about six uh, in the morning. Uh, hopefully, we can we can keep the time. And the reason we are traveling home tomorrow is because we are not allowed by the COVID regulations to keep uh, a body in the homestead for more than two nights. So this, there will be a 33-seater uh, bus. Uh, the has that is uh, uh, taking those who would like to travel home. And so it will be useful for us to have the names of those who would like to travel so that we can make the necessary arrangements. I do it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will be giving our offertory. Those who are on this side, you can just uh, walk slowly and give here. Those on this side can come. And please, let's just observe the uh, COVID uh, uh, rules as the Bunyore girls lead us in hymn number five. So we'll sing hymn number five. 
And I just want to say that uh, the Lord God Almighty honors his very own, even in death. Whatever is going on and has gone on, even when Leah was sick in hospital, the fact that everything has been running smooth, and at no point did the family his very own in death. So, let's, as you give your offering, we'll go through. Be a nova. Come, is that too high? Be a, is that too high? Okay. Okay, let's go. Be a nova. Come, only come. When the four they meet in the battlefield, we are blood bought princes of the road. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this offering. As uh, it is handed over to the family, we pray that, Lord, you will continue to bless them. You will continue to be with them. Thank you for everyone that has given. May you bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, This is how it's going to happen now. We want to... Uh, move out of the church the viewing will take place at the entrance I would uh, request the pastors we will take our position and if there is any other pastor please join us down here the casket will be followed 
by the immediate family and we'll have the alumni singing as we move out. Uh, viewing will take place at the entrance.
Let's have the final prayer and then we will uh, allow people to leave. Let us pray. Let us bow our hands in prayer as we pray. Everlasting Father and everlasting King, we thank you this hour and we honor you once again. You are our God forever, our comforter, our strengthener, the one who sustains and maintains us on the earth. We thank you, our Father, that we have been in your house, you have been with us, you have spoken to us. We thank you for, for comfort, oh Lord of comfort. As we depart from this place, as everyone departs, all I ask, let the blood of Jesus Christ be upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let a journey back to office, to their house, back to business, back to everywhere your people have been. Let it be safe and secure under the mighty arm of Jesus Christ. We bless your name and we honor you, our Father, for the family, O oh Lord of all comfort. Be with them every step of the way. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Somebody say amen. 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 Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless.